would like to create a full experience for the listener while performing this piece. Another question is how successful I'm doing that, and of course, the, only the listener will be the judge of that. Uh, but I do believe that many pieces of music, um, uh, foremostly the Mussorgsky's masterpiece, are written having in mind the full, wide, emotional package. Uh, the similar to what the movie is supposed to do, you know, to completely envelop us in all different types of sen uh, uh, um, uh, things which different senses of ours uh, react to. All of them, not only ears, not only sort of the, the upper part of our mentality, so-called uh, elite one, you know, uh, which is supposed to be uh, recognizing the only sophisticated uh, sort of touches of the very elite and very sort of special classical music requiring uh, education and hours and reading and many other things. No, this is the piece written pre pretty much by an amateur who Mussorgsky was as a composer. because many pieces are inspired by foreign pictures, foreign imagery, foreign languages even, and still it remains arguably the most Russian piece of art ever made. And uh, those somewhat paradoxical uh, and yet compelling features, they strike me. They really communicate with me, to me. And uh, when I started learning it, I started first intuitively because I was much younger and I would not sort of stretch my thoughts that much. I was just getting things more uh, on uh, intuition level. And, uh, but this communication started as a, as a love affair, so which still lasts, still continues and we are on good terms, <laughs> still, after many, many years. Yes, of course, I want to encourage everyone, very much included, uh, including myself, to have as personal relationship with every piece of music that we tackle, that we play, that we even think of picking. So before you pick the piece, of course, it is essential to create already, to be in love with the piece before inviting it uh, for the first date. about competitions. It's something that uh, is, should be important for young competitors. Um, of course, we all know competitions can be great or can be evil. When I was competing, it was pretty much a common sense. And we were scared of competitions and yet we were tremendously attracted to them because yes, it was promising us something that nothing else could provide it still stays so. Competitions are great. The evil quotation marks, evil that I mentioned before, of course, it's, it's more of a joke rather than a serious thing. It, of course, there are many, and they have been in history, many competitions where a certain deal of unfairness was happening. We all are aware of that. Well, we should be. 
uh, and still, no matter how much of uh, of this um, of the disappointment uh, of uh, of young talented people who are not or and were not treated fairly at the competition, no matter how many of them will have, we will still have more of success. So that's how I view that, and it's a it's a kind of hard pill to swallow a little bit to think like that about the competition because some of of you young competitors had a positive experience with your uh, competitions and some less so and some have been very lucky and some uh, just terribly unlucky and of course you will have a very different degree of belief in competitions but still overall overall uh, it is a wonderful thing it's a beautiful invention it's an indispensable part of today's culture and musical culture. So don't be shy, participate. Come, try your muscle. Uh, there is no true substitute of that. You can think that, oh, there are many careers uh, who, who have been achieved without um, you know, major first prizes. Yes, of course. And still there are more with. And uh, some people get more chances to be exposed without competition, to be exposed uh, to expose their art without the first prizes. But most of them do not. So come to the competitions and try your best. I have been lucky with my competition uh, career, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I say that knowing that, and I acknowledge that I appreciate this fact. Uh, however, I had quite a bit of difference in my experiences. When um, I came to Sydney in 88, I, I felt that, yes, well, it's, if it happens that I come up uh, on the top in the, in the prizes, that uh, of course it will be a blessing and it will be a tremendous one, one of the most, and perhaps by that time, definitely by far the most amazing event of my life. And that's what happened. It became the most amazing uh, event in my life uh, at that time. However, I did have the feeling, deep down subconscious feeling, that I'm not fully ready. I'm not as independent as an artist in order to, to start it on my own after the competition is done. Uh, and the following few years, I can say that they proved it. I was not fully ready. I had some successful performances, and some less so. And right now, as I look back, probably fairly so. Uh, but the Rubinstein competition in uh, 95 was a little different story. I, I was a little older. Uh, I was already approaching my, you know, uh, so-called competition uh, limit, age-wise. And I felt ready. Somehow I felt ready. I felt that uh, I not only have worked my way, uh, my way into readiness for each stage, but somehow emotionally I can take it. I did have this feeling and the follow-up of the competition also mostly proved it as well. I'm not saying that after the competition all of my concerts were blast and uh, tremendous success. Well, most of them I thought that they are success. You know, because people clap and they are very willing, they, they love us artists and uh, they appreciate our efforts. But probably it was also not, not so clear. And the longer I live, the, the, the more I see that this is uh, part of the normal thing. We cannot be perfect. None who lives on this planet is, and none of our idol 
composers whom we love so, so deeply. None of them were. We are all in search for what's better. And they were. And uh, that's what we're doing. The, the life continues. Now I am uh, 55 years old. Actually, yesterday I became 55. And I feel that I am a student. I'm a student. I, but I feel that I'm so much better student now than when I was a student. Uh, and I think I will die a student, you know, whenever it happens. And I'm very, very grateful for that. It uh, keeps my, my thoughts fresh, young. I know that there is plenty, plenty, plenty more for me to learn, not only in terms of new repertoire, but about music, about myself, about how to play better, many other things. And of course, my students help me tremendously. I am blessed of having a beautiful, beautiful group of students, of very talented individuals at uh, the New England Conservatory in Boston, where I teach. And they inspire me, they teach me. I'm learning from them, as well as they from me. Thank you, thank you, dear Paul, thank you. Uh, it was a beautiful time. The first years, the first months of, of America were phenomenal. It really felt, felt uh, like two huge new wings have grown on my back. And it was because of many factors, many, many things. Uh, but foremostly because of uh, Alexander Toradze, or Lexo Toradze, and his great wide and uh, welcoming personality, an extremely passionate personality as well, who was able to convince me that this world is really free, and in music it is so as well. And no matter how many, uh, how many theoretical uh, uh, items must be an active component in working on each individual piece. Still, it has to be covered with something, some face of a freedom. And uh, this was a very important uh, bit of my development as a musician uh, in America. And I'm grateful to Alexander Toraza for that, always will be. Um, and uh, yes, the, uh, that was what, what felt different. Somehow the air, uh, air around me became more free. Before, before when I was studying in Georgia, I, I was blessed with, with uh, being a student of one of the best musicians of our time, I think. Uh, he was a Georgian pianist, uh, Tengiz Amirejibi, who was a student of uh, Igumnov and Lev Oborin in Moscow Conservatory earlier in the uh, 20th century. So he was a descendant, a very typical descendant of extremely powerful Russian school. And that's how he taught me. And he, he taught me pretty much everything. Uh, and uh, it was really amazing experience that I had in Georgia with my musical education. However, it was, um, I was not ready to marry those uh, priceless components that my teacher was giving me to freedom. I was too immature to do that. Or not mature enough to do that. So with that factor, America somehow helped me, yes. And after that, actually, it was not an easy, easy travel at all. Because of course, you know, a few, few first years, you, I got uh, completely drunk on this freedom. And I was allowing way too many things in my playing as I look at myself back. And it took me many, many years, it is still, work in progress. 
to create the most successful, uh, the, the best working, the smoothest marriage between those two big parts of my musical uh, upbringing. Uh, well, but it doesn't have to be the same with other people. They, they, I'm sure that uh, many of us, most of us, will have different stories of, of uh, sort of self-establishing in, uh, in the world of music or believing oneself in music, which is probably the hardest part because once you have this, the rest of the components usually build up. how demonic and angelic coexist in pretty much every piece of music that we play. And how do we teach? How can we really present it to our students? Or uh, how can we justify sometimes a, a tremendous unfairness that we can hear in the music or the protest? And sometimes there is protest, sometimes actually there is no protest. Sometimes the music is being as if narrated uh, by, a, by a, you know, the, the negative hero. Devil himself, for instance, the, like the beginning of Lis Sonat, or many other uh, pieces, many other examples we can bring, like Prokofiev's Seventh Sonata, the whole first movement is is the terror itself. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's not done, you know, in order to make our heart bleed for this or no. It's just pure terror, as is. And uh, those things are not easy to comprehend for especially younger people and especially people of younger generation who has never, who have never known what, uh, you know, any kind of war is. Cold War or, uh, or any kind of um, uh, serious and deep conflicts between people. Um, so this is very important part of my teaching, yes, and we talk about those things, of course, at the lessons. And uh, uh, I am trying always to find what's best in each student and work with that mostly. Not of the, uh, I, I'm trying not to work of the, what is missing, but what actually is already there and try to build in the rest. So that's if I would vaguely uh, express my sort of attitude towards teaching, that would be the most basic, the most important one. And then of course it's just very, it's very individual. It's uh, it's very different. There are sometimes there are lessons. There are sometimes those wonderful hours that I have nothing to say, nothing, just zero. Well, of course, I can count them on fingers of one hand, probably how many I had though, of those experiences. But they uh, they are never forgotten. They stick with us. The, the the playing was so captivatingly beautiful and deep and so communicative that I simply was muted. I couldn't say a word. I only could praise it. And we would spend the rest of our lesson uh, searching for those wonderful things which just happened, acknowledging them, looking for them, and uh, you know, putting the beam on them. So the student would be aware of his or her tremendous achievements. So that, uh, of course, those lessons are a uh, blessing and sometimes we're lucky uh, to have those as well. We love music. 
that's why we do that. Of course, there is no single person among us, musicians, who, who would do it without loving. It's just simply not possible. And you, you couldn't play the piano, you couldn't play any instrument without that. Uh, and uh, so we are living in this constant cloud of music. Uh, everything, our communication, our friendships, uh, with uh, our colleagues on stage, with the chamber musicians, or the conductors, or the orchestra musicians, or uh, any kind of musical collaboration, and the rest of our life are the same things. It's all the same thing, it's the same life. I cannot distinguish my uh, relationship with the uh, wonderful violinist whom we I played my last chamber music concert with uh, uh, not this, I cannot differ the experience, my personal experience and attitude towards that person and my childhood friend who is not a musician. It is still part of my musical life. You know, everything, <laughs> everything around me, I, I'm trying to, not trying to, but it just happens to be music or having to do with music. So. That's how it, how I would globally answer that. And of course, I, uh, I was blessed communicating with wonderful conductors, with wonderful chamber musicians, with, uh, with truly distinct uh, individuals with, uh, with whom I, uh, I would want to spend more time on stage and off stage and talking. Uh, I, I do not want to, to start calling names because then I would have to present, you know, a very comprehensive list uh, and uh, I would just summarize it. I am blessed with, uh, with my friendships, my musical friendships, that's for sure. And uh, this is something that each of us starts working on once we start our uh, way in music and each of Young competitors, I'm sure, already have established this world for, for themselves. And the more, the better. about the audiences. Yes, of course, they, they differ. And uh, for us musicians, sometimes the biggest difference is uh, who coughs more where. And uh, there are some places in the world where audience is more quiet, and there are some other parts where audience is extremely noisy. And, uh, well, it just it comes with an experience. And of course, a few times I have been quite disturbed by, by noisiness. Uh, well, of course, I, we can write books about uh, how uh, educated the, the listeners of this concert series are and less so the other ones. I don't want to do that. Uh, and this is for each of us concert pianists to discover. With Georgia, uh, well, I'm Georgian, I'm from Republic of Georgia, and uh, I came to, uh, with my family, to America in 1991, but uh, never bridges were burned with my own little Georgia, and I love it. Uh, my parents still live there, my wife's parents still live there, and they uh, work, they are still active. Uh, and 
it is truly a very, very beautiful small country, very lovely, extremely hospitable, with beautiful food, with wonderful and well-developed tourism, uh, and very beautiful sights. The festival from Easter to Ascension, it's, it is a wonderful uh, academic music festival which uh, was developed, uh, I believe, about 15 years ago or so. And I was um, uh, happy to be its artistic director for uh, six years. And after that, I, I simply felt that uh, being in the United States and having all of my other concert activities and teaching, uh, it's just too much of a responsibility for the artistic director because it's a full-time job. You are responsible for all the events uh, at the festival and you have to build up the program uh, with a uh, very tight budget. And uh, it was uh, very challenging. So I, uh, I, I just didn't want to simply leave the festival without the director, but I wanted to find um, a, a person who would, who would willingly uh, become a director after me. And I found such a person, and this is a wonderful Georgian singer, Jano Tamar, who uh, lives in Italy, but very often she travels to Georgia, and she's now the artistic director. I only stayed there as an advisor, and sometimes, just time to time, I am uh, giving some suggestions to, to the festival committee. And yes, I, I have brought my students to this festival uh, more than once, and we have played a few uh, very interesting uh, and diverse programs some of the uh, you know of those mono programs old scrabbing for instance and a few other projects as well and i love involving my students in uh, in uh, concert activities if i am able to to help it of course i'm doing that and i'm going to do it more and i suggest everyone to do the same the summer festival culture is such a wonderful thing uh, you meet new people you, you absolutely have to be open to, to different things, to different experiences, to accept things that uh, maybe you were not aware of before, uh, or to, well, obviously not accept some things that are not acceptable to you. But it always reboots your taste buds for music, for art, for life. I hope that we all will be healthy. I hope that the Sydney International Piano Competition, which is a wonderful establishment, will take place. I wish the winners to be the true winners, the very successful ones, and the ones who are capable of, of holding, withstand the, the, the heft of the first prize. Because the competition actually starts with the first prize. Winning competition is difficult, but to win your career after the first prize is a really, a real challenge. So the winner should be aware of that before the competition. I wish everyone wonderful life in music. Let's stay healthy.